my boyfriend got the girl he told me not to worry about pregnant i just found out i'm pregnant too story time but me and my fiance steve have been together for just over three years and of course i love this man more than anything steve has no idea that i am pregnant i was gonna tell him on his birthday which is next month you know i wanted to surprise him until i found out there was something going on with this other girl there was no normal signs there was no decline in our relationship it was like one day a switch just flipped in him and he was a completely different person so we went around to a friend's house a few weeks ago and i noticed he was being really really distant i just like chalked it up to him being tired these past two weeks he hasn't even so much as looked at me so on friday i went out to visit my sister she lives in a different town I actually decided to come home a few days early because i felt sick from being pregnant and i hadn't told my sister so I just wanted to keep it to myself. Now, the worst part of all of this is that he was actually supposed to come with me. Or well, he said that he had to stay behind because of this project he's working on. I put too much of this on. Whoops. So, I get home. I walk in and I go straight to the kitchen. I notice that there is two plates on the table with half-eaten food, a bottle of wine, and two, like, candlesticks like these. Which have obviously had burnt candles in. It's all looking a little romantic for my liking. So when I got to the bedroom, I noticed that all of the sheets were all ruffled up and there was a pair of women's shoes by the door. His pants were also in the hallway. It was obviously a quick take them off situation. So careless. If you think that's bad, it's a whole lot worse. I tried calling him, I tried texting him, but just nothing was going through. I actually realised when I texted him that he blocked me. The worst part is, is that I'd been really, really suspicious of this girl. And he had over and over again said, oh, don't worry, she's got a boyfriend. She just works in a different department, never going to see her. She had, in fact, left her lanyard on my bedside table. He told me not to worry about her time and time again. After this i thought i'm gonna bring his family into it like i'll knock him down a few pegs so i called his sister because i've always had a really really good relationship with her and this motherfucker was giving me attitude excuse me yes, stacy i didn't realize you were a part of our relationship porn anyway she's screaming at me down the phone and i thought god this girl just isn't gonna get why i'm so wound up so i screamed over the top of her i'm pregnant radio silence that shut a girl up didn't it and after this she told me that she was gonna get her brother to call me me and steve met up later that day you know considering he's the one that cheated i expected him to be quite respectful and um nice to me but no he was very callous he was very very cruel learn the room know your place steve come on anyway he just wasn't taking any of it in and he was like at least she gives me what i require from a partner she's respected she's supportive she can give me a baby Steve somehow got it in his head that because I have this thing called endometriosis, I just can't have kids. And I was like, and this is how I found out that he'd got this other girl pregnant. What? I and this other girl have decided to keep the baby. Please do let me know what you think on this whole situation. Am I the arsehole for telling my sister she needs to stop bringing up her miscarriage for attention? Story time. So, my sister Amy had a miscarriage about 10 years ago. Obviously, it was absolutely devastating for her and the whole family. And it took Amy a fair few years to heal from it all. And even now, we're still not like 100% sure as to why it all happened. But it appears to be some sort of like a one-off because she's since had three very, very healthy, happy children, including a lovely, lovely set of twins. So here's the thing. My sister, and i just really do not get on she is that little bit older than me and she resented me as a kid because we had to share mum's attention which i should probably mention that we're actually stepsisters and she was convinced that her dad left her mum to be with my mum she never really grew out of that resentment and she was pretty much my biggest bully throughout the whole of my childhood one thing she absolutely cannot stand is when my mum and i do things without her and yeah my mum does pay more attention to me than she does to her because I am her biological daughter. And whenever me and my mom are out doing anything, I'll post it on my story and without fail, Amy will call my mom. And she'll be like, hi, do you have a moment to talk? I'm just feeling really sad about the miscarriage. And obviously my mom is a very, very caring person. She never wants to see anyone upset. So she will drop everything she's doing with me and she'll go to Amy, wherever she is. 
to her work, to her house. It's bizarre. When I say she will literally drop everything wherever she is, this includes the trip when we went to Paris for her birthday that I paid for. It got cut three days short because Amy said that she needed my mum. I'd also like to preface that her mum is still with us. Her mum is still alive. She is more than welcome to call her own mum. Also includes the time I was literally in hospital and my mum would want to come and visit but every time she would plan on Amy would call her so my mum never visited me in hospital. So in my head I'm thinking maybe this is all just like one massive coincidence. So I spoke to my mum about it and said you know does this happen quite often you know could she like see a therapist? My mum was like no it only ever seems to happen when I'm around you. So recently I got quite sick and I'm talking like couldn't leave the bathroom for days type kind of sick. And I couldn't get to the doctors either. So my mum was stopping around sort of every day as she was going to or finishing work just to see how I was. So on the last day when I kind of felt like I could eat again, my mum was around and she offered to make me some soup. So mum is there making me soup. Then all of a sudden we get the phone call. It's Amy. She's upset about the miscarriage. Mum literally drops everything and tells me that I will have to sort the rest of it myself because she had to go and be with Amy. I didn't say anything. I literally just looked at her. So I finished the soup and that is when I decided it was time to send a text message. It said you really need to stop sending these texts for attention every single time someone around you gets some attention that you're not having. I guess she must have told my mum and her dad because now I'm hearing from everyone around us I'm such a horrible person. I'm insensitive. I'm invalidating her feelings. I understand that she may still be traumatised by the whole ordeal. However, I think it's very weaponized. So what do you think? Am I wrong here? Am I the arsehole from banning my sister from seeing my daughter because she took her on a Tinder date? Story time. Me and my sister Amy have always had a pretty decent relationship. Fresh. So Amy has babysat my daughter many, many times over the years and there's been no issues at all. So a couple of weeks ago, me and my boyfriend Steve went out to celebrate our anniversary and Amy, she was more than up for babysitting. She even offered. Everything seemed to be really, really good. We let her know that me and Steve were planning on being out for like eight hours. We were going to go to cinema. We we're going to have a meal. We we're having a good like mom, dad night out, you know? So after watching the meal, Steve actually ended up getting a bit of a migraine. So I just was just like, oh, I'll just drop you home and you can go chill, relax, get a bit of a nap in, whatever. I text Amy and I was like, hi, we're on our way home early. When I pulled up, I noticed that Amy's car like wasn't in our driveway. So I went in, called their name, no response. I called Amy four times. I lost my shit down the phone. I was screaming at her, demanding to know where they were. Amy was like, oh, uh, yeah, no worries. We'll be, we'll talk when we get home. Like I'll be 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Where the bloody hell have you gone where well, you're 20 minutes away from my house and my daughter? So at this point, it was way past my daughter's bedtime. So I put her to bed. And after I was sure she was asleep, I exploded again at Amy and demanded that she start talking. She told me that at the start of the night, she'd been chatting, matching up with this random guy on Tinder. And he had asked her to come over and he didn't live that far away. Babe, hey, you were 20 minutes away. That's, that's pretty far. She said that she knew my daughter would just be asleep the whole time, so it wouldn't be an issue. Everything was fine. She was really safe. She just sat on the sofa, watched the Muppets and ate what's it. Oh, yeah. To be fair, that does sound like a pretty good night in. But not for a four-year-old. I, again, was just like, how could you be so reckless to what, what in the world made you think that that was a good idea, you weirdo? She just couldn't see why this was a big deal. Amy was like, I can read people. I know when people have good vibes. I thought, the vibes right now in this room ain't it. Are you reading them? After that, I told her that she was never allowed to see my daughter again. I never wanted to see her or speak with her. She started crying and said that I was overreacting to this whole thing. She went home, told my mum and dad, and my mum and dad do think that I'm being a little bit dramatic about the whole situation. But what do you think? Was I in the right here? Am I in the wrong for telling my mum she's going straight into a nursing home whilst my dad is going to live a life of luxury? Story time! So... I have never really had a very good relationship with my mum. We'll call her Sandra. She's a very vain, superficial and very materialistic woman. That's just not my vibe. 
In all honesty, I do not see what my dad sees in her at all. I can tell you the exact moment as to when I stopped caring about my mum. So when I was 13, I was riding my bike and I got into an awful accident. I basically got hit by a car. One of the worst injuries I got was on my face. I had a really, really bad scar. It would take cosmetic surgery to fix and rectify. And as soon as I recovered from like the physical, other physical injuries, my mum really started to push me to have this surgery. I had not so great of a time in hospital and I was just far too anxious to go back but fortunately my dad put his foot down and was like when she's ready to have the surgery she can have the surgery but she's not doing it till she's ready slay dad my dad reminded me every day that i was still beautiful later in life i would find out that my mom had told my brothers to make me feel ugly for my scar so that i could get the surgery quicker and if i ever had a hard time at school because of it and kids were making fun of me for how i looked my mom would be like well, you know how to fix it. Because of the type of job that my dad had, he wasn't seeing much of this go on. He could never really shield me from my mum's opinions. But when he finally found out what had been going on, he lost his shit. And he even threatened to divorce my mum. Slay number two for dad. Eventually, I caved and I ended up getting the surgery. During my recovery time, my mum got invited to her best friend's wedding. The whole family was invited but she only took my brothers because she still believed I was too ugly whilst I still was recovering from the surgery. She didn't believe that I'd be pretty enough to be involved in the wedding pictures. And from that day, I literally hated my mum. Didn't want her involved in any big moments in my life. So me and my husband just bought our first house and like in the gardens, like a little garage type thing which has a bedroom a bathroom a little living room and a kitchenette and this is where i intend for my dad to be able to live one day and when my mom saw the house she made every single complaint she could she said that she was going to require one of the bedrooms in our house and i looked at her and i was like why do you why why do you think that like why do you even think you're gonna have like a little sleepover for one night let alone like stay with me he was like what do you mean i said why do you think i'd have you in my house and i wouldn't find the cheapest care home i could find and put you in there mother was absolutely shocked and at that moment i got to tell her all of the crappy stuff go fired up today at that moment i finally told her how much of a crappy parent she was and unless her beloved sons are gonna pamper her in her old age, she will be left on the streets in an adult diaper. Now my brothers are calling me daily, telling me how much of an insensitive asshole I am. Inconsiderate assholes. They say I should forgive her past mistakes, but personally, I'm not really too sure what I've done wrong here. But yeah, please do let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. Am I in the wrong for outing my husband to his family and telling the truth about what he was doing whilst I was in labour? Story time. So I gave birth to my son about 10 weeks ago. I went through this exhausting period whilst I was close to my due date. I was experiencing the craziest discomfort. And you know, I just really wanted my husband there for whenever anything was going to kick off. I didn't know when I was going to go into labour. And I told him this. But he decided that it would be a better idea to hang out with his mates every night. They would go and watch all the football games till late at night. Like I suggested playing those games and watching the games at our house just in case. But he was having absolutely none of it. He said they had certain, how can I describe it? rituals whilst watching the game you just can't enjoy doing that at home or anywhere else so the night of my son's birth my water broke whilst he was at his buddy's house i called him i was like hi water is on the floor water has broken baby is coming are you i told him to get home and take me to the hospital he said he was coming i waited for an hour and he never came so i ended up having to call my sister she only lives like five minutes down the road so and my husband showed up to the hospital two hours later he would call every 10 to 15 minutes asking if i was still in labor he was like the game's nearly done so i'll be over soon what do you mean you'll be over soon now he was able to make it just in time for our son's birth but I was livid. I was furious. I was disappointed. He apologised profoundly. He apologised profound. He apologised a lot. And he's been doing everything he can to regain my trust and my respect. He's otherwise very, very supportive and involved in our son's well-being and care. Babe, that is literally the job of a dad. Like, that's, that, that's not something to praise. 
So last night we went round to my in-laws for the first time since having our son and we were chatting and we got talking about like the birth story. This is so funny that I just carry on talking with my eyes closed. Like, am I even on screen? Anyway, and my husband starts to recall, you know, like the whole thing. He started lying about driving me to the hospital. He said that he was sat in the waiting room feeling so stressed and nervous but excited. He said it was really difficult standing on his feet for so long waiting. Which even if, even if you were there, Steve, like, come on, read the room. I was confused and I've had enough of this shit. I was like, mm, is that, is that really what happened, Steve? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, well, I remember it like this. I remember that you were in fact over at Dave's house watching the football and you refused to take me to the hospital so my sister did and actively went into labour whilst you were watching the game. Now my mother-in-law, we stand, my mother-in-law Sandra, we love her so much, love you Sandy. She takes no shit from anyone, right? And I low-key am kind of scared of her. She started berating him left and right. At one point, he decided he was ready to leave. She was like, you can shut up and sit down. Sandra, you boss bitch. Everyone started howling because it was so funny that she was cheating him like he was like eight years old. Like, shame on you. This is not how I've raised my children to treat their wives. He didn't say anything to me on the way home. He went nuts at me saying that I had made him look neglectful. That I should have just told them all that he was there the whole time. And I was like, but it's not good to lie, Steve. And he says, I hope that I'm proud of myself for causing a rift between him and his family. 